It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us back on the show is Sister Ignatia Henneberry. Thanks for being here, Sister. Thanks for having me. Last time you were here was quite a while ago. It was back in episode 105. Wow. People can find that at kylehyman.com slash show105. And uh, you talked about your vocation story, your discernment process to mm-hmm. becoming a religious sister. Uh, mind giving us a little recap of that? Like, what brought you to being a campus ministry sister at the University of St. Francis? <laughs> it sounds like a like superhero powers, like all, all right. together. Um, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm originally from upstate New York, and I didn't have Catholic school or anything, but very like faithful family. And I guess through that first thought of being a sister, like really probably pretty young, you know, Mother Teresa was around, you knew about that. So I thought that would be a really, you know, cool way to live or something. Okay. And didn't think much about it until college. So I went to a Catholic university and then, you know, you're going to and from classes and then you see religious sisters walking around, going to classes, Uh some are in your class. And that was, yeah, totally different for me. And, um, so that was the first time you were exposed to religious sisters in person? In person, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like inter- like meeting them by name and like, oh, you are taking this psych stats class too. Interesting, <laughs> yeah. okay. So yeah, so that was the first time. At first I was like afraid and I think that was kind of like subconsciously I was like, okay, this is it. But um, huh. I don't know what I thought they were going to do to me. Like they didn't, it's not like they like... <laughs> you know, grab you and make you, you know, enter anything. It was just, yeah, kind of that nagging at the back of my mind. And then Hmm. I played basketball while in college. And one of our sisters, while she was studying, was also kind of helping out the school and kind of like a pastoral assistant, like part of the women's basketball team. So that was kind of how I first started thinking about it seriously, because I saw, kind of saw the religious sister in like a different light of like, oh, like she grew up playing basketball. She played college basketball herself, coached like Hmm. you know quote normal interest and stuff like that things that i'm interested in yeah and yet like she chose to do this with her life you know like the question of like why like why did that happen yeah she was just very like open to for me to ask questions so i just started asking questions we would shoot around like just like normal things and that kind of then encouraged my like discerning even more and then after my sophomore year through a lot of like prayer and like visiting the sisters, I like, really felt the Lord calling me to enter at that point. Like I wasn't feeling called to really finish a de- my degree. I wasn't really certain about that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I, um, yeah, I decided to enter after my sophomore year of college. And then funny thing, I went back to that same school after three years of formation to like finish my degree. Uh-huh. So that was an interesting <laughs> gift to be able to like go back to that place and kind of do for someone else, like what I, what I experienced. Yeah. So where did you do your original formation? My formation effort as a sister? Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, our mother house is in Mishawaka. So that's where our sisters go through formation. And that's also where the older sisters, like once they need either like nursing care or like kind of like a retirement situation, that's where they go to. Sure. Yeah. So you go from New York to Steubenville, Mm -hmm. Ohio to Mishawaka. Yeah. And then back to Steubenville. Midwest. Ooh. And then back to the, at least Fort Wayne South Bend Diocese. Were you yeah. originally in Mishawaka for a while or were you at University of St. Francis from the get-go? Yeah, University of St. Francis was my first assignment. That's what, yeah, we call it like okay. an assignment after after um, uh, completing my education. So I took, it took me three years to finish my degree and then the um, coming to Fort Wayne was my first assignment. And that was about three years ago, so... Any regrets? No. <laughs> <laughs> not, I that, guess, not that I can say. <laughs> I guess uh can't tell my, my, my younger self to like necessarily to do this, but you'd rather not fight the Lord yeah. as much as you probably do. But I mean. <laughs> Why do you think you had a, whatever, a pull or an instinct to quote unquote fight the Lord? Oh, I am stubborn and <laughs> more i i guess like it's just like normal human stuff i think on either side either like married side looking at religious or even priesthood looking at married like we all like look at each other and think like oh <laughs> that's that would be so much better or i could do what i wanted or all this stuff but we realize like 
our life huh. isn't. I love Bishop Barron has these t-shirts, I think, and it says like, your life isn't about you. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like these self-help things or conferences, like this time is for you right now. I'm right. like, wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so I think it's a process to learn that. I just was, I think it's, it can sometimes be a hard process to learn that, that, right, it's not about what I want to do. It's right. It's not happiness, yeah. So part of it is kind of giving up that control, mm-hmm. maybe, yeah. and being open to, to God. But I suppose also part of it would be, especially as a religious sister, it's not a normal, quote unquote, right. normal vocation. Mm-hmm. And so if you feel pulled in that way, like, no, that's mm-hmm. that's not what normal people do. Yeah, it's it's abnormal. It's extraordinary, maybe as at least especially as far as the culture goes of being right. counterculture. So was there part of that was the kind of acceptance of, all right, I'm going to do this, and some people are going to think that it's weird. They're not going to mm-hmm. understand. I might get mm-hmm. some weird looks from yeah. people from time to time or classmates yeah. and things. I think maybe my personality, like part of that was actually even attractive to me. Like I, yeah. and I wasn't like totally out there in left field, but I did like to just like st- stand out or, you know, like in uh-huh. not in out, totally outrageous ways, but that part of it was kind of attractive. Like, wow, this is going to be like really radical. And like, I do still notice like people like look at me or whatever. And I went, so example, I went, my parents were visiting last weekend and I went, we went to a Tower of Power concert at the Clyde Theater and I'm like talking to my dad before the show a starts Tower of Power concert yeah Kyle you don't know Tower of Power no oh gosh 50th anniversary tour look it up <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so one of my dad's favorite bands so we went and I'm talking to my dad before it starts and I see in the background like somebody's iPhone facing like right at me oh yeah so I was like yeah. okay so I'm gonna take my picture but I'm just gonna like ignore it and continue my conversation yeah, so like that happens you're but, their Instagram story yeah yeah I guess this, so. is, this is exciting yeah so I think more <laughs> of it for me was not necessarily that I'm st- gonna stand out but like I'm gonna stand out in this way that I didn't necessarily choose like I was imagining in my mind like oh I'm gonna do like all these my life is gonna be awesome and great and blah 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 and then the words like Yes, but not how you might be thinking, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. That We're makes talking sense. with <laughs> Sister Ignatia, a campus minister over the University of St. Francis, also a member of the Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual Adoration. Perfect. And <laughs> want to kind of get into what is a typical day in the life of a religious sister? Oh. In general, and then maybe my life, because my life's a little different. Sure, e- e- either way. <laughs> okay. You do you first, yeah. or, or the uh, the average sister okay. first. I guess, I guess average, like, I am I do follow the average, but um, we always kind of say, like, our day starts and ends pretty much the same, I okay. guess. Like, you wake up and you usually spend, like, your first about, like, half hour in, like, your personal meditation prayer Usually, like praying with the gospels. Well, I guess like, even before like that, the gospel for the daily mass, or just open up the Bible to some gospel. Um, usually, usually the daily mass, okay. just so you're like preparing for the for the mass. Yeah. And then we pray our morning office together, the liturgy, of the hours as a community, and then from there, I mean, it's like breakfast. So then each sister kind of goes to like where, what her apostolate is, and you. It depends on you know, when mass is like the university or mass is kind of in the middle of the day. So then we break for mass every day. And then at the end of the day, we come back together and sometimes a sister will maybe say like her rosary or do spiritual reading before evening prayer. And then we always have supper together, recreation together, either chatting or games or what kind of games? fun time. Oh, um, not many people know Quiddler, but it's a pretty good game. Quiddler. Yes. Yes. You build. You, it's like each card is a letter and you kind of like build words and stuff. Okay. So, yeah, there's some sisters that can that expand my vocabulary when uh-huh. I play with them. Um, so, yeah, just like having fun with each other. I mean, that's our, like our family time. Like um, usually cards or board games. Yeah. Like or yeah. Like or frisbee, crafts. Uh, summer, definitely. Yeah. More okay. like softball, some frisbee. Uh-huh. Um and then right before for bed, even either like that's like spiritual reading time and then night prayer before going to bed. 
And then at the mother house is where we have our perpetual adoration. So that's when sisters, so like if I'm up there during a summer or whatever, that's mm-hmm. when you'd like wake up sometime in the middle of the night to take an hour of adoration. And so you don't have perpetual adoration in Fort Wayne? Correct. I try to go to St. Jude's uh-huh. um, when I can and on the weekend. But when we don't have the exposed buses, hacker rent, maybe like in close vicinity our convent, like mm-hmm. personal adoration of the blessed sacrament in whatever way is still like part of our personal prayer during yeah. the day. Yeah. So part of the sisters of St. Francis of perpetual adoration is that you each have a, a unique apostolate, a, a different way of living out your life. It's not like uh, what you might see in the movies of a, a, a religious order that is, always spending all day in mm-hmm. the convent together, <laughs> doing something together, or even maybe uh, <laughs> traditionally more lately that a religious order might take on a project together. So like mm. this religious order runs a school. Yeah. So the nuns would be teaching in the school or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you guys, you're all scattered out doing different things. Mm-hmm. So there probably isn't a typical day in the life of a religious sister. What does your yeah. specific day look like? And how is it maybe different than some of the other sisters? Yeah, it is interesting. So we have, we always say like our, all of our works, like we do as a community. So we do have like, yeah, perpetual adoration is the first, and then healthcare and education. But yeah, there's a million and a half things you can do in healthcare or education. So, mm-hmm. um, so for myself and Camus Ministry, it's, I guess, not what I anticipated a sister or even myself doing. I do love it. I mean, my, primary role is to spend time with our students and to meet with them and to hopefully spend like a lot of time either like one-on-one mentoring or that sort of thing but yeah my daily schedule is a little different because free time for college students usually occurs between the hours of you know 7 and 10 p.m yeah so my schedule kind of fluxes a little bit and um when I get to work I'll do you know do like preparation kind of stuff like a bible study women's group prepare material for that or a formation that we have for our peer ministers. And then usually my schedule also thing with like college students, they don't like schedule like three weeks out. They usually schedule like five days out, two days Uh out. Right. right. So my schedule usually fills up with like individual meetings as the week goes on, Uh you know, student is like, yeah, like, can we check in? And like, that'd be great. Like, when are you free? They're like, tomorrow? I'm right. Like, sure. Yeah, tomorrow. Great. <laughs> so what does that look like? What is that check-in? A check-in? With Sister Ignatia? Uh, <laughs> check-in with Sister Ignatia. Um, and can I schedule these check-ins? <laughs> sure. Well? Okay. I do. Asking. I can, well, pull up my calendar when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> um, usually it depends. Like, some of my more, like, one-on-one are more frequently, I guess. So then it's usually, like, yeah, like, how you doing? Like what's going on? Uh-huh. Um, like spiritual yeah, the, direction? Not technically. I'm not technically trained in spiritual direction, uh-huh. but I find with a lot of our students, like a lot of them aren't quite ready for that anyway. Yeah. You know, so that it's usually, yeah, then like, how's your prayer life? Yeah. And if it's like, yeah, I was really struggling to pray a whole lot, then we're like, okay, well, how do you make your life so that you can have time to pray and right. that sort of thing. And then a lot of it is sometimes just like, either just like woundedness or or whatever, or like self-talk is a big thing of mm-hmm. like how, and caveat, I do speak mostly with women, so that's kind of colors, you know, what we talk about. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's sometimes just, you know, like somebody said this, which reminded me of like when I felt like this and then I felt depressed. I'm like, okay, like let's... Um, let's talk about like how you're like how you deal with like how you're feeling and like okay well what does God say about you okay like let's pick a psalm like okay you're hearing this but what does God really say and hopefully replacing some of those thoughts which is a process but it's neat to see like one of my students I forget how what prompted me to say it but I was like your your emotions are neutral so like if you if you're angry if you're like annoyed like that's okay Hmm. And she just like had this total like mind blown moment. It was like, wait, what? I'm like, I'm like, yeah, your emotions are like they're okay. Like it's <laughs> you know we feel like I shouldn't feel angry or I shouldn't right. feel depressed or I shouldn't feel. And then that just starts the whole like downward spiral when actually, okay, I feel angry because of this. Can I do anything about that? Maybe not. Like okay, then like what? 
how can I redirect my anger or how can I understand it? Um, yeah. So a lot of it is just like their own like self awareness and self understanding and like how God actually does really love them and is pleased with them. So keeps me on my toes, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, I would love to talk with you more about campus ministry and some of those conversations that you have and some of the struggles that our young people are having, uh, mm-hmm. but we're out of time. So <laughs> we'll have to save it for yeah, the future. Sure. Uh, but where can people find more information about the sisters mm-hmm. and the university of St. Francis? Yeah. Um, the sisters are on online uh, in a lot of places. So SSFPA.org and then um, Instagram, Facebook, obviously shout out to sister Benedicta. She does a lot of work for the community doing all that promotional stuff okay. and campus ministry again. Yeah. And like social media on sf.edu is the university's website. If uh-huh. you're interested to check it out, what we do at USF. So, all right. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. And go, go ahead and uh, check out episode 105 too, for more of your vocation stories. Thanks right. sister for joining us. Appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. Thanks Kyle. <laughs>